the Amazon, all was chaos and mythic revelation. But I knew that you couldn't bring that back as a scientific theory. And my bias has always been toward science. And out of these many intuitions and revelations, I discerned a thread, which was about time. Uh, it began with a conversation with this Logos entity where it said to me, did you know every day is composed of four other days? And I said, no, I not only didn't know that, it's never occurred to me. What a bizarre idea. Well, so this, I, this idea then of a time being a resonance created by other times, not immediately before or after it, as in scientific causality, but somehow a day centuries ago, centuries in the future, come together to create an interference pattern that creates the unique moment so that was uh, one of the basic assumptions. And then the structure on which this all was hung was uh, the I Ching, which may seem exotic to American and European audiences, but which is, of course, as familiar to anyone in Chinese society as the Declaration of Independence is to us. And what is the I Ching? Well, it's a very ancient uh, method of divining and predicting the future based on the idea that every moment can be symbolized by a, a unique ideogram, which is somehow uh, uh, its essence, much in the way that science believes you can explain all nature with 108 elements, the ancient Chinese took the position that time itself was made of elements. My style of thinking is scientific enough that uh, if I were to say to somebody, I propose a revolution in physics based on what I know about an ancient Chinese divinatory system, that would seem foolish to me. It seems occult, it seems unscientific. Uh, why should an ancient Chinese book of divination hold any insight whatsoever for modern physics? But the uncanny thing about the I Ching is that it seems to work. Even in the hands of its critics, it seems to work. So let me try out a metaphor on you, which I think makes much more clear uh, what's going on here. Visualize for a moment sand dunes. And notice when you look at these sand dunes in your mind that they look like wind. Sand dunes look like wind in some sense. Well, then analyze the situation. What is wind? Wind is a pressure variant phenomena that fluctuates over time. Uh, in a way, the sand grains moved about by the wind are like a lower dimensional slice of the wind itself. And from photographic analysis of dunes, you can calculate the speed and duration of the wind that made them. So the dune is a lower dimensional slice of time, of the wind ebbing and flowing that made it. Well, now let's change the metaphor a little bit. Instead of grains of sand, let's think of genes. Instead of a windstorm, Let's think of a billion years of evolution. It moves the genes around in a pattern, which is a lower dimensional slice of the force which created the situation. In other words, on every living organism, there is the imprint of the higher dimensional force which made it. Now, somebody could say, well, that's God. Well, but in a scientific context, we don't speak like that. But whatever it is that made blind matter into whales, squirrels, and human beings, it left its calling card inside each human being, each squirrel, each whale. That's the DNA. Well, the DNA codons are based on a system of 64, exactly like the I Ching.
So my belief is that someone, some group of people thousands of years ago, looked into human organism, looked by meditative techniques into the center of their own beings, and they were not mystics, nor were they empiricists. They were simply curious. But at the center of the meditative experience, they saw an ebb and flow, an energy field that was in a constant state of flux. And they asked themselves, how many elements are necessary to describe this energy field? And the answer was more than 10, less than a thousand, more than 20, less than 500. And when they finally got it worked out, lo and behold, 64 situations are all the possible potential situations there are. Out of 64 subtypes of time, you can create everything from the coronation of Queen Mary to the resignation of Madonna out of 64 types of time. So really, what the I Ching is, is not a book of Chinese mysticism. It's a book of uh, molecular dynamics that sees through biology to the physics that allowed biology to come into existence. And um, I, I'll argue this with anybody in the field, regardless of how hardcore an empiricist they claim themselves to be, because uh, I think uh, the coincidence between the structure of the I Ching and the structure of the DNA is staggering. It's not a simple correspondence between 64 and 64. All the processes that occur in DNA can be easily modeled uh, with the six-line hexagrams that make up uh, the I Ching. It's almost as though Western science was fascinated by energy. For 5,000 years, we pursued understanding energy. And this process ends with thermal nuclear explosions in the deserts of the American Southwest. We can light the fire that burns in the heart of the distant stars. We know how to do that. That's what the Western mind achieved, political issues aside. The Eastern mind was not interested in energy. It was interested in time. And they spent 5,000 years deconstructing it, looking at it. And you don't use atom smashers. You don't use enormous physical pressure. It's a different problem, and you bring different tools to bear. You meditate. You look inside yourself. You study the movement of water around pebbles. You consider the situation. You study history. In any case, the bottom line is, the people who pursued this understanding of time achieved as sophisticated a relationship to time as the Western relationship to matter expressed through our ability to trigger fusion and fission. So there's a great deal for us to learn in the West from these Oriental efforts to understand time, and it is not necessarily mystical. What I did was entirely mathematical, it's not transparent to a person who has not studied mathematics, but to a professional mathematician, it's utterly trivial. There's nothing occult about it. And uh, I, I think true understanding can be communicated and formally described with mathematics. And that's what we have here. We're on the brink of a fusion of Western science with quote-unquote Eastern mysticism, nothing mystical about it except that we call it mysticism. But the fusion of these two viewpoints is going to give us a complete understanding of the universe of space, time, matter, and energy.